Body people do things, I mean, it's one thing, and of course, these people, I really respect them. They actually go all out, and it's so much harder work. Well, well done to them for actually making, of course, Malaysia proud as well as so going into the Paralympics and stuff like that. Well, as you can see, we have some really awesome, yummy looking cupcakes here. It's purple in color, and it's not just what it looks like, it's not just yummy, it's actually for a good cause to build an awareness. We will be coming back to talk about domestic uh, abuse, domestic, domestic violence, and we want to stop this right now here on Bella. And we want to discuss it further so don't go anywhere we will be right back after this break violence against women continues and keeps increasing ev in every corner of the world it's really disturbing for us to see these women suffering in pain we want this pain to end now bella confidential will be right back after this Welcome back to Bella Confidential. As you saw the stats earlier, it's, we will be talking about domestic violence. If you're just joining us, you're just in time because we're just about to start our topic. Well, it's October month. It's also Domestic Violence Awareness Month. But a lot of people do not know uh, the importance of being aware and, of course, curbing this problem in the bud. As you know, women, uh, it's a devastating toll on women, not just on them, as that on their family as well. And no one should go through this. And to talk more about this and help us understand what domestic violence is about, let's please welcome uh, Judith Loco, Honorary Secretary of AWAM and past President of AWAM, uh, Milan Sadwani, Assistant Programs Manager of AWAM, uh, Regina Yao, Founder and President of the Pixel Project, and we have Kat Masia Katiman. She is actually a victim of domestic abuse. First of all, thank you so much for being very brave for coming onto the show. Well, before we actually dive into the topic of what domestic violence is uh, against women, and of course, violence against women, what is the Pixel Project all about and what's your collaboration with AWAM? Yeah, the Pixel Project is a completely virtual non-profit mm -hmm. uh, organization charity focused on um, raising funds, awareness and volunteer power mm -hmm. for the cause and violence against women, of which domestic violence is one of the types of violence against yeah. women. So we partnered with Mm -hmm. because um, we wanted to, we actually have Painted Purple, which we'll talk a, a little bit about yeah. later on, but we wanted to do Painted Purple here in Malaysia mm -hmm. to raise awareness about domestic violence for Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And um, we found Awam because uh, our secretary, Annie, mm -hmm. actually worked a little bit with Awam as mm -hmm. well, so that's where the connection was made. And Awam, you, you are all Women's Action Society. Malaysia. Tell us, is this your first time working with the Pixel Project? Yes, it is. Yeah. And we just found that our visions and missions matched. Mm -hmm. We both wanted to bring awareness. Mm -hmm. We both wanted to end violence. We envision a non-violent society. Mm -hmm. And that's where, you know, it all came together. And we decided to take up this partnership and, uh, you know, go Which is an awesome purple. thing to, to see happening. As And as you know, you know, pink, it, people always talk about Pink October, you know, mm -hmm. it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, but it's also, uh, October is also a month for awareness for domestic violence. Why do you think the awareness is not, I mean, it's there, but not mm -hmm. big enough? What do you think is the main issue? I think that the awareness itself on domestic violence, it's seen for years, it's, it's always been seen as a private, mm -hmm. a private affair. Mm -hmm. It is always found in within a home, yeah. between intimate partners mm -hmm. between husband and wives. Mm -hmm. But don't get us wrong that domestic violence is only about women being abused. Mm -hmm. Men do get abused. As well, and yes. the reason for this abuse is about power. Mm -hmm. And in our society, we need to also ask the question, who holds the power? Mm -hmm. And it's the men. Mm -hmm. Not all men abuse women. Of course. But, yeah. you know, there are forms of violence, different forms of violence. Mm -hmm. And the forms of violence that we have, we are looking at physical violence, mm -hmm sexual violence, verbal, psychological, social violence, you know, economic violence. And violence actually covers a whole spectrum of life. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it is very important and we are so glad that uh, Pixel has come with, to partner with us on this project. Yeah, so. definitely. And of course, we have uh, Kak Matsya who's been through um, domestic violence. Kak, boleh ceritakan sedikit tentang um, apa terjadi kepada kakak masa, da, like with your suami kan? Yeah. 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 Boleh ceritakan sikit? Mm. Suami saya mengalami masalah kecelaruan fikiran lah. Mm -hmm. uh, jadi, kami dan saya dan anak-anak biasanya menjadi mangsa lah. Mm -hmm. Bila berlaku kecelaruan fikiran dia itu. Mm -hmm. Dan 
uh, untuk mengatasi masalah tu saya berbincang dengan pakar uh, bagaimana untuk kita lepas daripada masalah uh, untuk bagaimana untuk mengatasinya dan untuk melepasi uh, kongkongan yang kita berada di dalam tekanan tu sampai bila kita nak duduk di dalam keadaan ketakutan macam tu kan Yalah. Jadi kita berbincang saya, macam saya untuk melepaskan masalah saya, saya berbincang dengan pakar, mm -hmm. saya berbincang dengan ahli keluarga mm -hmm. dan saya membuat keputusan yang terbaik mm -hmm. untuk bebas daripada kongkongan tu lah. Mm. Saya rasa kakak memang sangat berani, mm. ya, untuk Terima ceritakan kasih. semua ni. Mm. Boleh saya tanya tak? Uh, derita yang macam mana atau apa yang suami buat kepada kakak? Tadi they explain that you know that's emotional, mm. physical, sexual mm. abuse. Mm. Untuk kakak macam mana? Macam dia, uh, dia bila dia marah, kita menjadi mangsa lah. Uh, dia pukul ke macam mana? Pernah satu tahap dia pukul, lempang saya lah. Uh -huh. Bila kita memberi pendapat yang dia tak suka. Uh -huh. dia Tapi mula-mula macam mana? Awak berkahwin berapa tahun? 15, 15 tahun, tahun kan? Sebelum kahwin dah, dah tengok Sebelum kahwin, dia punya karakter? Masa dia baik, memang dia baik lah. Uh. Sangat baik. Tapi bila dia datang ke celaruan fikiran dia tu, dia tak kira siapa dia kita kena dengar cakap dia walaupun arahan tu tidak betul mm -hmm. bila kita bagi pendapat dia akan mula marah lah mm -hmm. dan saya mendapat nasihat daripada doktor bagaimana untuk mengatasi masalah ini mm -hmm. dan saya ikutlah Ikutlah nasihat doktor. Nasihat doktor. Ya. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. Well, Kak Masia is one person that's brave hmm. enough to yes. actually step forward yes. and seek help. But there's a lot of women who don't. I mean, looking at the stats earlier, um, if you look at it, 2005-2010, it's kind of not really decreased mm -hmm. in a way. It's yeah. kind of maintained. Yeah. Uh, and maybe you can... Yeah, and you have to remember that those are just statistics. Yeah. Those are just the ones that are reported. Who do report. What about the ones that go mm -hmm. unreported? So we must assume, and it's uh, probably true, that the figure is much more higher mm -hmm. than that. And uh, usually the statistics are hard to obtain mm -hmm. because uh, people don't want to talk about it. Yeah. And uh, why they why they don't want to talk about it is the fear. The fear, of course, yes. the fear is always there. Mm. Like you said, it's the different sort of power. Mm. Whereas, although the, the example <coughs> if we're talking about w uh, violence against women, you look up to the man to be your protector, but in it's yeah. the other way around. So you were mentioning earlier. Um, well, we have a stats on the types of domestic abuse. Although we mentioned it earlier, let's take mm. a look at the types and the percentage that's out there. Let's take a look. Well, as you can see from the stats over there, emotional um, uh, sort of abuse is 95%, but 95% mm -hmm. roughly. And of course, phys physical 90% very high and sexual as well. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us, in uh, let's say a relationship, can it all three types happen at the same time or sometimes it's just one? They all constitute as a violence, violence, right? Yes, yes. yes it Maybe is explain to me like emotionally, how abusive can emotional yeah, violence be? Okay. It, it can get to the point where the woman doesn't know mm -hmm. who she is. Okay. It, the, you know, her husband yeah, or partner will absolutely destroy your own sense of self. Mm -hmm. And it can, and like Judith said, it's all about power, it's all about control mm -hmm. and manipulation. So you might have two at once, or sometimes you will switch tactics and use one mm -hmm. depending on what's happening. Yeah. Um, an example of, uh, say, psychological violence yeah. is when, say, uh, they start calling you names, mm -hmm. um, you know, um, women who have been called yeah. sluts, yeah. Uh, yeah. prostitutes. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, um, one of the you're reasons... You're good for nothing. You're good oh, for yeah. nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. One, of, uh, one of the many reasons that domestic violence happens is uh, there's a number one cause is jealousy mm -hmm. or the, the perception that in their the own partner, mind sometimes yes right? yes sometimes in their own mind the partner is uh, perhaps cheating on them but it's usually not true mm -hmm. um, but they throw these accusations and they throw uh, labels and names mm -hmm. um, and you know in the end the woman or the man being abused feels absolutely worthless worthless which no one should go through mm -hmm. no one deserves yeah. yes and also i think um because every day we receive calls, mm -hmm. we have uh, clients walking into our organization, mm -hmm. AWAM. And just now also, you know, talking to Kat as yeah. well. You know, as she said, if, when it happens to you, you become voiceless. Mm. And the whole person actually gets destroyed. That's why it is so important that mm -hmm. we need to speak out. Yeah. And for her to be able to very speak proud, out. Very it, yeah. 
and mm -hmm. hopefully you know you'll be the voice for many of those yeah. who are yes. the survivors who are going through Correct. it because yeah. and earlier when you said you know why are the stats going up mm -hmm. yes but don't forget because of this awareness mm -hmm. like with Bella you know doing mm -hmm. a show like that it brings about awareness mm -hmm. and it allows the person who is at home yeah. who thinks that she's going through alone realize that she's not alone she's not alone. that yeah we can actually speak out there's a place to go to you mm -hmm. know to talk about it yeah. and basically the underlying is we want a better family Definitely. we want a better society correct and all these attitudes mindsets have to change it has to change yeah. and as you said it takes a, it's a devastating toll on the woman not yeah. just on her her mm -hmm. whole family well talking about that uh, we've now we understand what domestic violence is all about we will be going for a short break but you know what when we come back we'll talk about um, how it can actually lead to other serious things like suicide mm. and of course why you should actually leave that man if you are actually going through this Bella will be right back after this break <laughs> Welcome back to Bella Confidential. As you can see, it's a very serious topic, topic today. It's about uh, domestic abuse or violence against women. Well, you always hear this. He says he loves me, but he abuses me. Now, this is something that happens to a lot of women. Uh, reports are made, but not all women can actually take action. And earlier, we were uh, discussing with our guests uh, the types of um, domestic violence. But now we want to continue our conversation because it can lead to other things like suicide. And of course, the main thing is you need to leave that person that's actually hurting you. Let's uh, continue our conversation, uh, of course, uh, with Judith, um, Milan, uh, Regina, and of course, Marcia. Um, again, we were talking earlier about uh, moving on, like you were saying, the signs. How, how would you actually know? Some women don't even know they're in a, um, say, let's say, domestic violence situation. What are the clear signs or telltales that you are in that situation? It's any form to control you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, perhaps um, they they wouldn't allow you to leave the house mm -hmm. or m maybe they question where you're going and a, mm -hmm. a bit a bit too much yeah and it's um it's just that that constant uh way to control someone really mm -hmm. that that can be a form of violence as well um what else um isolation from friends and family mm. that's one thing you know he, he won't let you hang out with your friends, friends anymore when you say mm. you're going over to see your grandmother he, he won't let you um that's taking away your support system they, they start by taking away your support system mm -hmm. and then they work on breaking you yeah mm. definitely. and i think also in the early part of relationship mm. you know before the courtship itself Correct. everything seemed really nice mm -hmm. but i think that uh, women need to be very aware mm -hmm. what's the attitude how is he because quite often they will say I care for you I love you mm -hmm. that's why you know I need to protect you mm -hmm. but what does protect mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. does protection mean stopping you from doing things that you enjoy mm -hmm. what is life then yeah. you know mm -hmm. and a relationship is one that you can grow together mm -hmm. is not to cripple you Correct. and it's not to trap you mm -hmm. so so I think it's very important you know we are in that in that mood of love mm -hmm. that sometimes we do not actually want to recognize yeah. the violence that is and, in that person and the, the, the man doing it, it's a selfish kind of love it's a selfish That's kind right. of love right it's just it's like a pet they're there in the cage <laughs> as long as they're there but it doesn't matter what else i do yeah. to that person and i wanted to ask kak masia also masa kak, kakak 15 tahun kan yeah. kahwin dengan suami bila kamu tahu yang kakak dalam situasi itu kakak so, Uh, masa the, dia dah, dah pukul saya tu uh -huh. dan dia masuk hospital doktor uh -huh. sahkan lah yang dia ada kecelaruan fikiran uh -huh. dan masa tu saya tanya dia kenapa dia buat saya macam ni uh -huh. dia kata dia tahu dia buat tapi dia, dia sedar dia buat apa, apa yang dia buat dia sedar tetapi dia tak tahu kenapa dia buat dia tak tahu dia tak dia boleh tak, kontrol uh, emosi dia tak boleh kontrol emosi dia kakak pernah terfikir nak larikan diri tak masa tu pernah hmm. tapi ada berapa anak empat orang anak susah kan ha, susah sebab saya fikir anak dan saya 
mesti mengatasi masalah ini secara baiklah. Mm -hmm. Saya tak nak lari begitu saja. Mm -hmm. Dan saya mendapat nasihat pakar mm -hmm. dan saya buat keputusan untuk berpisah. Lah. Bila kakak dapat nasihat pakar tu? Uh, tu tahun 2009. Oh, okey. Mm. Okey. Itu pun selama oh. setahun saya berfikir sama ada untuk saya lepas atau berada di situ. It's very difficult ya, memang hmm. situasi memang, yang susah. Memang susah nak kita nak membuat ke satu keputusan kan, hmm. memang teramat ter ter susah. Yeah. Tetapi masa itu saya fikir saya kena buat satu keputusan hmm. yang mesti saya buat. Kos kakak yeah. pun memang at that time sayang suami kan, walaupun mesti, dia buat macam uh, tu kan. Memang sayang. It's a, it's a weird yeah. situation right, where you love your husband, but that's the the trap. Yes. Hmm. But it's not a trap. You love, and I think it's important, uh -huh. you know, that we actually grow into love. Mm -hmm. And that's when it becomes very difficult because you are already in a relationship, mm -hmm. a deep relationship, and more so when you have children. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, and, and quite often marriage is put on a pedestal. It's yes, that correct. Everyone is said, when are you getting married? Mm, you know? Always. Yeah. Yeah. And it's seen as <laughs> sacred. Your aunties, yeah. your uncles, when are you getting married? Yeah. Yeah. And it's sacred, you mm -hmm. see. So when something of this abuse happens in the home, very often we don't want to talk about it. We believe, and or rather we hope that, mm -hmm. the person would change. Of course. But the person will never change if the person, the woman who is a survivor, does not mm -hmm. speak up, mm -hmm. does not tell the, actually the husband or the mm -hmm. spouse that she wants this. If not, I will go and seek for help. I will go to the police mm -hmm. or you know to the women's Correct. organization and all. Yeah. And yeah. So, sorry. There's also another reason why most women can't leave, and that's mm -hmm. because of the financial situation Correct. that they find yes, themselves yes, in. Yes, right. um, most women can't leave because they don't have a form of income because mm -hmm. they're dependent yeah. on, on their, their husband yeah. to yeah. Uh, provide to financially. Them. And uh, it's not easy uh, to just leave like Kak Masya did. Yeah, of course, there's so many things you have to think about. You're actually not being selfish yeah. because you're thinking mm -hmm. yes. of your kids, yes. your family and everything like that. Well, there's another, something really sad that happens as well, is suicide sometimes, mm -hmm. right, when it happens. Well, we have a stats that uh, actually shows us the different percentage of who actually tries to commit suicide with the different type, and uh, with the acts of um, violence against them. Let's take a look at these stats. something like that uh, some women think about or they actually act upon it and of course we don't want this to happen because life is so precious right yeah. so maybe you can explain to us just in very brief uh, what we saw just now yeah basically um, when there's a uh, when there's violence inflicted upon you basically your self-esteem is shattered mm -hmm. and when that happens um, you know it's very easy to want to hurt yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or uh, go to the extent of uh, mm -hmm. committing suicide but yeah. I mean, the important thing is that you, you know your lack of self worth is mm -hmm. not there anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And also, if you do not have the support, and mm -hmm. if also if you do not have the awareness of what you can do, mm -hmm. that's why it's very important for survivors mm -hmm. to be empowered. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like Kak herself, yeah. somehow, somewhere, actually, in all of us, we know whether we have been abused, whether, you know, something has been done yeah, wrong to that's us. not right. But mm -hmm. what is it that stops us from going and doing is because of a fear. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the fear is coupled with where do we go? Mm -hmm. Who is going to help me? You mm -hmm. know, can change be brought about? Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of all these very complex questions that if we are not aware of the issue, that's why we are here to talk yeah, about it. If we are not aware of the issue, you cannot do anything about it. Mm -hmm. So that's it's very important. It is important, yeah, to yeah. know the issue itself. And it's sad because it does happen, you know, where, whether it's abuse or people, where it's psychologically when they're so damaged, they don't know how to live on, they don't know how to move forward. I want to ask Kak Masia, masa um, ada wanita yang memang bunuh diri yeah, bila betul. dalam situasi ini, pernah tak terfikir macam tu atau memang tu tak ada dalam? <laughs> tak ada lah untuk uh, bunuh diri tu tak ada. Tak ada. Tapi saya dulu rasa macam mana saya nak hidup tanpa suami mm -hmm. tapi bila sampai satu tahap tak boleh tahan uh, tak boleh tahan saya kita minta pada Allah lah mm -hmm. dan mm -hmm. saya masa tu dapat bertunjuk mm -hmm. dan still macam ni saya dah dua tahun 
hmm. pun saya boleh hidup juga of course yeah, yeah, yeah. bersama anak-anak so kakak lebih gembira sekarang saya lebih gembira rasa selamat kan <laughs> rasa selamat dan saya uh, kak macam sebagai uh, contoh untuk wanita lain okay. untuk berdiri depan semua mm. dan beritahu yang kamu boleh buat sesuatu mm. and i think that's important right yes. to stand yes. forward and say something can be done but what would you say is the main reason for women or the highest reason for women not to leave their husbands what would be the the biggest It's reason. a stigma. Yes. yes. It's a stigma that you have that um, how can you actually go and tell on your husband? Mm. It's like a you betrayal know, to them. It's a husband. Mm. It's your husband that you mm. took the vows on, mm -hmm. you know, to bring about a family. Yeah. So how can you when somebody who loves you and because like domestic violence after the violence he will apologize correct yes mm. and he will sign, say right? you know mm, i'm yes. so sorry i will change mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so actually we also need to focus what can we actually do to help mm -hmm. the perpetrators yeah. to stop mm -hmm. this violence like she was saying my husband said i don't know why right. i did what i, I mm -hmm. did and it's because there are many reasons for it mm -hmm. but the few reasons would be because the way we have been brought up mm -hmm. the way girls yeah, are supposed to correct. be obedient to their know? men yeah to yeah. Their <laughs> their <laughs> tea, cook yeah. them dinner submissive. <laughs> we are supposed to be submissive yes, that well, well men yeah. are encouraged to be dominant, dominant. Yes. and to take control take what know? they and want they're rewarded for it in our society mm -hmm. and they're not taught to respect yeah. others yeah. we need not to all like you that. said but it does not happen it yes. still happens a lot maybe yeah. even uh, in certain rural areas where yeah. it's still that hierarchy of I'm the man. Yeah. You yeah. respect me, and the word like you said, submit. What is submit? submit. It's only a certain. I mean, it's a. I think it's a. Con, it's a joint mm. uh, respect to mm. each other, mm. yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. 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 You know? And when we also say when women take you know Action. charge, mm -hmm. they say oh they are aggressive, but mm. it's not. It's being assertive of <laughs> yeah. our rights. You of know? course, of course. And no one deserves to be violated. No one, mm. yeah. under whatever circumstance, mm -hmm. no one. And we are talking about. Men over women, women, women over, over men, men as well. Yeah, of course, it, it happens both ways. Yeah. But, and of course, we also have a stats on uh, what are some of the other reasons for leaving the men. Some, of course, you say tak boleh tahan lagi. You know, you just cannot mm. take it anymore. But let's take a look at some of the other reasons for actually the women taking uh, uh, the stand to leave their men. Let's take a look. see there's about 10 reasons types of reasons well for women to actually some say they cannot endure it anymore that's like takes up 45 to 9 percent but there's also a part where they're badly injured uh, mm -hmm. that takes up about 19 19 percent but threatened to be killed mm -hmm. that happens as well right yeah. you think the men that make these threats do they mean it or they just again it's that power to it's it's power and it's mm -hmm. about control like we said it's all about control mm -hmm. so I we wouldn't know if they mean it or not, but um, the the fact that they say it mm -hmm. uh, is is bad enough, like, and it's it's quite sad to see that uh, you know women have to wait till they're badly I injured know. Yeah. Yeah. and till they're suffering that mm -hmm. that bad or see their children suffering to Correct. leave. Mm -hmm. um, we must we must you know encourage more women to leave before the situation Correct. gets bad. And there's some other reasons, you know, um, um, of course, them seeing children suffering as well, mm -hmm. um, encouraged by friends. Well, friends play play an important yes. role, family yeah. members. Support How system. important is it for, let's say, a family member or a close friend to encourage that person? How would they actually do it, you know, to convince them? Let's say they just, they're too afraid. Mm. How, what would your main advice be? I think that um, it's very important to have a listening ear. Mm -hmm. A home, like, right, you know, a home is a place whereby you care, yeah. you know, you're concerned mm -hmm. for the other and genuinely care and concern. So when your loved one is hurt, let's say your daughter is being hurt, mm -hmm. it is important to actually believe what she's saying mm -hmm. because no one wants to talk about of the course, violence, you know. Course. And when they come to, for even to our organization, we do not ask, what did you do? Mm -hmm. No, it's about, tell us about it. Yeah. So in any home environment or even to friends, be a listener. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, when the person, the survivor, is able to speak about it, she's actually empowering herself yeah. because 
in the home, most of mm -hmm. the time she's being shut out. Shut out. Yes. Like you, you have no quiet, voice. No yeah. voice. Yeah. And your whole person becomes, you know, traumatized. Mm -hmm. Traumatized still, you know, when you feel you do not have an outlet, that's when suicide happens. Yes. Mm -hmm. And violence is a learned behavior. Mm -hmm. Violence, that means if this person says, you know, verbally, I'm going to hit you. Mm -hmm. And if you do not do anything, the mm -hmm. survivor doesn't do anything about it, then you find that the next time he would push you. Mm -hmm. Then he would end up slapping yeah. you. Then he would actually kick you. <laughs> and he will strangle you. Yeah. So it just progressively goes on. And that's why we, who are survivors, who are survivors themselves, have to actually put a stop to it. They have to put you a are stop. actually also helping the perpetrator. Of course, you're you not. Know, you're in this learn, learned mm, behavior itself. Because yeah. you're not taking any action to protect yourself. But of course, a lot of women, they're worried about safety. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? So how do we convince them that when they do come forward, that they will be safe from the man who is abusing them? They, 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 must know, they must know that they're not alone. Mm -hmm. um, we have m uh, many outlets here in Malaysia mm -hmm. to help. Um, Awam is here. WAO, mm -hmm. the Women's Aid Organization, mm -hmm. has a shelter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, even welfare actually provides shelter and other forms of help. Mm -hmm. So there are many places you can go. It's just taking that first step and yeah. asking for help. Um, like how Kat Masya yeah. so bravely did yes. and uh, she um, she had to come from another state mm -hmm. and move here to get help mm -hmm. but you know, it, it, I it guess it, it, uh, you, you do whatever it takes mm -hmm. to get the help that you yeah. need. Exactly. If, if, yeah. if you're online, um, mm -hmm. like a site like the Pixel Project, we yes. actually have sections where they can download a checklist. Correct, yeah. So you actually, yeah. to escape, you need a plan. Mm -hmm. And like Judith said, you know, as friends and family, we have to start by believing, mm -hmm. not blaming the victim. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, online, there are plenty of resources. If they can get online, mm -hmm. download a check. You know, a lot of um, organizations do have checklists they can download and print out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to get your safety numbers and everything, to get everything in place, get your bag packed. Yeah. So the moment he's not in, mm -hmm. you get someone will come and pick you up and you can go. And so it. it needs to be planned because going back yeah. to what we said, it's control. So you have to find an out. And, mm -hmm. out, and yeah. of course, something yeah. of it that's safe. Mm -hmm. Something mm -hmm. safe. Untuk Kak Marcia, of course, masa untuk Kak tak ada online internet, ada guna tak? Uh, sometimes ada. Ada kan? Uh -huh. uh, so sebelum jumpa pakar, ada beritahu kakak ke family ke sesiapa keluarga uh -huh. atau Mula -mula terus, ke uh, terus ke pakar? Terus ke pakar. Lepas tu saya berbincang dengan keluarga. Uh -huh. uh, dan keluarga saya, support tak? So, keluarga saya sangat support. Uh -huh. Dan saya membuat satu keputusan lah. Oh, uh, keluarga dia? Keluarga suami? suami? Mereka... mereka... <laughs> Jangan nak cakap ya. Mereka uh, percaya tak? Hmm, mungkin percaya kot. Mungkin percaya hmm. lah. Mungkin percaya. Ada rasa ragu Sebab tak? selama ni saya tak pernah bercerita masalah saya. Mm -hmm. Dan tak ada siapa pun tahu masalah rumah tangga saya. Mm -hmm. Saya cuba nak memperbaikinya. Mm -hmm. Tetapi sampai satu tahap bila saya dah dapat nasihat pakar tu, baru saya terfikir, mm -hmm. adakah saya menjadi mangsa? Mm -hmm. Ya. Yeah. Hmm. Dan pada masa tu saya betul-betul berfikir dan saya terpaksa membuat keputusan. Mm -hmm. Sebab pada saya, Suami adalah tempat kita bergantung. Betul, of course, ha, ya. Yeah. Untuk kita berlindung. Mm -hmm. Tapi kalau satu tahap dia ras dia membahayakan untuk mm -hmm. saya. Mm -hmm. Saya terpaksa membuat satu keputusan lah. Mm -hmm. Yang keputusan yang saya rasa tepat lah. Rasa mm -hmm. tepat tak rasa ragu tak langsung rasa kan? Ragu. Mm -hmm. Dan so, keluarga suami bila you cerai semua okey. Masih semua jumpa okay. tak? Okey, masih terima kami baik. Kamu ba saya baik. pun bagi anak-anak berjumpa. Mm -hmm. Of course bukan oh, salam mereka kan? Mm -hmm. Bukan salam mereka. Yeah. Mm, kita yeah. cuba nak buat yang terbaik. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Wow, she's a very steady woman. Very, yeah. very steady. <laughs> I'm inspired by yeah. her. Yes. What, what sort of uh, women that come here? Of course, like Kak Masya, it took her 15 years in the marriage. Mm. It's 2009 that she got divorced, but she still took the step. Yeah. Mm. You know, mm. are there women out there who, how long does it take before? It, as it, does it vary? Mm. It does vary. It, and it depends largely on also whether they have support, whether mm -hmm. they have a listening ear, like mm -hmm. Jude said. Um, whether they um, they are able to just take that first step and start thinking about mm -hmm. what's happening mm -hmm. to them. Yeah. Because to get to that stage, it's not easy. It's not yeah. easy. Easier said than done, yes. yes. right? Easier said As than friends, done. even, you know, when you see your friend in a bad relationship, you advise them. Mm -hmm. But we're not in the situation. Yeah. It's not always as simple yes. as yes. that. Yes. Well, Bella will be going for another short break, but don't go anywhere because we, when we come back, we'll talk more about building that awareness and, of course, doing something about it because women do not need to go through this pain anymore. We'll be right back after this.
Yes, you're still with us for Bella Confidential and our main topic of today is domestic violence against women. It's a very pressing issue. We've been discussing it with our guests who are here really, uh, of course, Kat Masia as well, who's actually a domestic um, uh, violence vic uh, victim as well as from survivor. our... Yeah, survivor, sorry. Who was, yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank God she, she broke out of that. Of course, we, we were talking, as you saw the flash earlier, uh, preferred help, meaning, you know, going to either a family member is one of the highest percentage. Some go to the police, some even mm -hmm. talk to his mother or their own mother. So these are sort of preferred help but mm. tell us a bit before they actually go get the help what are some of the things that they need to do or be aware mm. of what some of the strategies yeah mm. they first you need to be aware that you're abused mm -hmm. acknowledging it is so hard mm. yeah. yeah it's so hard but it's the first step mm -hmm. next you have to realize no matter how alone you feel mm -hmm. you are not alone Correct. and you have to reach out yeah. like you say to your family member mm -hmm. your mother his mother whoever you think mm -hmm. will believe you and mm -hmm. that's why we're saying we need to change the culture we have to start by believing mm -hmm. and we mustn't blame the victim mm -hmm. um, number three start getting a plan together do you have kids do you have dependents like kids or pets mm -hmm. You know, because uh, abusive men often also take out their, on the kids. their abuse on the kids mm. and on the pets. Mm -hmm. Get them, you know, start planning. Yeah. You know, observe his schedule because mm. these men go to work. Observe right. when he's in, when he's not in. Get your friends and family who believe you to start helping. Pack your bag mm -hmm. when you know he's not going to be in town. Yeah. And then you must, the, the most important thing is you've done all this planning. You've taken all the steps, you've acknowledged that you're being abused, mm -hmm. everyone believes you. And don't think that people won't believe you, they will, especially if you have black eyes and of stuff. We, we see these things, but mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't remark on it because mm -hmm. we always think it's a private family mm -hmm. matter. Right. And in our society, society mm -hmm. family is everything. And mm -hmm. like Judy said, we don't want to break up the family. Of course. But this has to be done. But the final step is the woman. She has to take it. So when the chance comes, she has to walk out that door and it's so difficult to walk out yeah. that door. Yeah, and like you say, you have to be smart about it mm -hmm. and everything like that. Well, we also want to talk about, you know, like women need to fight back, right? Mm -hmm. So let's find out how many women actually fight back. Let's take a look. <laughs> Wow, as you can see, uh, the, hi the highest percentage goes to those who never fight back. You know, some fight back once, once or twice, several times. Yeah. I, I wanted to ask Kak Matsya, okay, mm -hmm. because she's been through it. Um, masa Kak dalam situasi itu um, dengan, dengan suami, ada bagaimana cara Kak bertengkah ke kalau ada macam mana cara lawan balik dengan suami? Berani tak? Mula-mula uh, saya tak berani lah, mm. tapi uh, bila dia cakap sesuatu yang kita tak boleh terima, kadang-kadang mm -hmm. tak boleh diterima mm -hmm. oleh akal yeah. kita, kita lawan lah. Mm -hmm. ha, tapi bila kita lawan, dia lagi lawan. Lagi marah. Ha, lagi marah. Bila kita lawan, dia lagi marah. Mm -hmm. Jadi saya tak tahu nak buat apa lah. Mm -hmm. mm. tapi, tapi macam mana benda ni macam ganggu fikiran kakak masa tu? Kerana you ada anak-anak kan? Anak-anak menjadi penghibur saya lah. Mm -hmm. mm, bila saya rasa terlampau kena tengking macam itu kan, mm -hmm. kena marah. Mm -hmm. Saya biasa akan mendiamkan diri aje lah. Mm -hmm. Saya tak boleh nak buat apa. Of course. Ha, Tapi anak-anak pernah tengok lah. Anak-anak ha, memang selalu tengok saya menangis lah. Tapi mm. te pernah tengok tak suami buat kepada kakak yang pukul mm, kakak tak, semua? Tak pernah. Tak, tak pernah tengok tak lah. Pernah tengok. Oh, mm, tapi pernah dengar, dengar lah. Tapi dengar. Mm. Well, this is a, this is the problem, you know. Mm. Children are involved mm. as well. Either they see it, mm. or they they hear it, but it's still it's emotionally. Yeah. yeah. Explain they to get, us a bit yeah. how how bad this can affect them emotionally as well. Children yeah, are very indeed. perceptive, so mm -hmm. they know when something is wrong, mm -hmm. and it does affect them. But the good thing is that children also heal very fast. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you walk out the door. Um, make sure your kids get the help that they mm -hmm. need. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but how it affects them, it can affect them in, <coughs> in many, in many, many ways. ways. And uh, like, like we were talking about, uh, sons who watch their fathers, exactly, yeah. their mother, mm -hmm. the uh, will they learn that this yeah. is right? They have to unlearn the behavior. Mm -hmm. They have to yeah. learn that it's not right. Yeah. You know? It creates um, a cycle. Yes. And we have to break, to break the cycle. You know, the moment you leave, if you have kids, you have to start start the healing process everyone the whole family yeah, yeah. and and you know start get, 
start, you know, maybe showing them what healthy mm -hmm. relationships are like. It's easier said than done. Yeah. But it's, it's you know, I, I can't remember the statistics exactly, but in the US, you know, a lot of boys who watch their father beat their mom, mm -hmm. they grow up to be yeah. abusers too. Yeah, because they, yeah. they grow up in the situation where they hear the dad shouting mm -hmm. or belittling their mother. That's mm -hmm. a form of abuse mm -hmm. as well, like you said, yes, yeah. or physically abusing. What are the stats for the worldwide for women, the abuse? Mm -hmm. um, one in three women and girls worldwide will face some form of violence. It could be domestic violence, That's it could a be lot. rape, it could yeah. be female genital mutilation. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, one in five women worldwide face rape yeah. or attempted rape and that's those statistics are from um, the UN women mm -hmm. and then the World Bank estimates that women and girls from between f ages 15 and wow. 44 are more susceptible to violence gender-based mm -hmm. violence than car crashes malaria yeah. mm. hospitalization <sighs> you know mm. so I so for me I when the organization like yes. Awam we are not only seeing the counselling, no, we yeah. have to see a oh. bigger picture. Mm -hmm. And that's why in the in AWAM itself, we are looking at advocating for rights, mm -hmm. looking mm -hmm. at the government to put in laws in place. Mm -hmm. We're looking towards the whole um, political situation, mm -hmm. the politics, the, the rights of, uh, the, of decision makers mm -hmm. to speak out, to say, stop this violence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, so, and the, at the same time, we're looking at legal rights itself. Mm -hmm. So women's groups are not only doing the looking into counselling but we are also doing lots of education mm -hmm. bringing awareness mm -hmm. to young people mm -hmm. going into workplaces mm -hmm. to, to talk about these issues yeah. and you know a platform like this to bring to a greater you yeah, know, audience community well. yeah, audience, audience itself and it's a very common perception that this is a woman's problem but yeah. it's not oh, yeah. It's, yeah, important. Just we have. it's important to say that it's society's problem Correct. and men need to you know, take that step as well mm -hmm. and say, no, this is not right. This yeah. is not the way to treat women. It's exactly. not the way to treat anyone. Exactly. Yeah. Like, just slapping a woman is wrong as well. So again, yes, it affects the women, mm -hmm. but men need to step up yeah. and be role models as well to say, yes. this is not right. This is not how we treat mm -hmm. women. And I think women, mm -hmm. it's so important for women to know their rights. Mm -hmm. yeah. No one deserves mm -hmm. yeah. to be abused in any form or any way. Yes. That's right. So yeah. do you think there's enough, uh, I know you guys, you know, the organization, you're there to lend an ear and of course advice and of course help lead them to the right direction where they can uh, be safe. Yeah. But do you think there's enough shelters or um, in the country for, for our women or is there something that you need to improve on or ah. I mean, there's always room for improvement mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. I think in our organization we are not community based mm -hmm. meaning that we do not have shelters yes, but yes. when women come to us mm -hmm. uh, the survivors we will always assist them mm -hmm. in looking for places mm -hmm. because we believe that the, the government the mm -hmm. whole system is not speaking up on yes. these issues. Mm. So our organization looks towards education, mm -hmm. you know, the awareness. I think that once you have the knowledge, then you can actually do something of about course. for yourself. Too. Exactly. And of course, uh, you have the, the campaign going on right yeah. now to make a big difference, make it so much better. It's a Painted Purple yes, to help. Tell, tell us a bit about this with the... Oh, so Painted Purple is three years old mm -hmm. and it started as a virtual campaign. It's still largely a virtual campaign. We were getting purple is the, the, the is a color of the women's rights, the cause mm -hmm. of women's rights and also violence against mm -hmm. women. So basically, we, we started by getting people to paint the internet purple, you know, we mm -hmm. get them badges and banners in purple yes, and stuck yes. it on their blog, Facebook mm -hmm. and all. And we're still doing that. Like mm -hmm. this year, um, I mentioned pets just now. Mm -hmm. We actually mm -hmm. have a photo campaign uh, in together with Painted Purple yeah. called People and Pets Say No. So you can go to our Facebook page and see yeah. these people and their pets holding up signs saying, we say no to violence. Definitely, yeah. um, yeah. But in Malaysia, uh, we've, we are, we're having some event. We, had, uh, we launched Painted Purple in Malaysia this mm -hmm. year. So we had a really great launch party on the 6th of October. Mm -hmm. But on the 27th of October, right. We are going to have a massive <laughs> cupcake bake sale. Bake sale. That's why we earlier yeah. we saw those awesome cupcakes yeah. earlier. They look so beautiful. But again, it's for a good cause. It's yeah. happening in Wanutama, right? It's happening in Wanutama. Uh, it'll kick off at 12 p.m. Mm -hmm. on mm. the 27th of October this Saturday, mm -hmm. and it'll run till 6 p.m. We have a thousand cupcakes to sell, so <gasps> please come. And, and it's for, yeah. You mentioned male role model. Yes. We have a mystery Malaysian ah. male role model. You see. Mm. 
The Pixel Project works with male celebrity mm -hmm. male role models mm -hmm. from all over the world. We work with Nobel Prize winners, mm -hmm. Pulitzer Prize winners. So now in Malaysia, we're getting a really mm -hmm. good man, and he's... Um, He's actually going to publicly say no to violence mm -hmm. against women and domestic violence. This is awesome. I think it's so important for people to step up, especially for men, to step up and say as well. And I, uh, we have to wrap very soon. Kak Masya, ada apa nasihat terakhir kepada wanita-wanita di luar sana? Paling bagus yang Kak boleh kasih. Nasihat saya, sekiranya kita ada masalah, kita tak perlu simpan. Macam terlampau lama macam saya. Kita cuba atasi dengan berjumpa dengan pakar mm -hmm. Yang terbaik kita berbincang dengan keluarga mm -hmm. Dan yang selebihnya kita berdoa kepada Allah lah Kepada yeah. Tuhan Terima Itu kasih sebaik -baik. Terima kasih And for you Milan, what's your final say Or you want women out there to uh, Meet my, them, what's your impression? <laughs> my final say would be Let's spread the awareness together mm -hmm. Let's uh, tell everyone mm -hmm. uh, Tell your friends, tell your cousins um, put it up on your Facebook site if you have to. Mm -hmm. um, you know that we have to say no together because yeah. that's the only way to yeah. um, to start yeah. making a change. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, ladies, for coming on. You know, for Awam and of course the Pixel Project and mm -hmm. Masia for being here today. I think a lot of women out there are very inspired, and definitely it's time for us to take action. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show in the sense that you got something from it because women need to know their rights. No one deserves to be abused in any form or any way. Well, do catch us tomorrow for Bella Society as we have a great show for you tomorrow. It's all about gold investments. So basically, what are we talking about? Well, as you know, the economy is out of balance and the dollar sign is on the decline this and that so gold could be a smart way to invest but don't be dazzled and forgot to and don't forget to do your homework ladies because you actually might be a scam victim in all of this as well so always make sure you do your homework because gold sounds good go for gold but uh you know what do your homework well i hope you took something from our today's show because again uh, october month is a uh, domestic violence awareness month and you women need to stand up for your rights and of course with a uh, great um, um ngos and of course like awam and the pixel project you can do something about it uh, do go to our facebook page to find out more details if you uh, want to catch our show again today and find out more you can actually go to www.tonton.com as well i'm vanessa chong you a great day ahead.